Welcome to part four of the Taking Flight podcast, a CNY Pod Players production. Taking Flight is a 10 episode dramatic thriller fantasy about Brian Larson, who, after an airline disaster, literally drops into a small Nebraska town where he struggles to uncover the mystery of his identity and his past. Taking Flight absorbs you in a world of colorful characters, paranormal phenomena, dangerous creatures, and suspense. Previously on Taking Flight, Ellie takes Brian with her to investigate a bizarre cattle mutilation at a local ranch. On the way back to town, they are nearly run off the road by a mysterious couple in the white van. After Brian confesses to Ellie about his unexplained survival of the airplane disaster and his confused memory about his life in Chicago, she takes him to visit the local witch-like psychic, Philomena, who lives with her companion Raven in the woods. And now, part four. There you are. What took you so long? Roger's been waiting for you. Roger, that raven is smarter than most teenagers around here. In a really creepy way. I hope Brian doesn't get too freaked out by this place. It can be quite unnerving under the best of circumstances. Who's Roger? Philomena's pet, or companion. Hopefully Phil will be able to glean some truth about this guy. Brian may be able to bullshit me, if he is bullshitting me, but Phil will see right through him. I really need to find out what his real story is. She's as white as a ghost. Oh, she's... She has albinism. How old is she, do you know? Close to 90, I think. I've never dared to ask. Her eyes. I thought albinos had pink eyes. She very well may have. She's had cataracts for as long as I can remember. I think she's nearly... Blind. That's right. Crazy old blind woman. But I see you well enough. Come on in, I'll feed you some lunch. You must be hungry after your ordeal. What ordeal is that, Philomena? On the road, in the storm. we still got little waves of upset vibrating off of you both. Wipe your feet before you come in, would you? I just swept the place off. Yeah, you didn't help one damn bit, Roger. How did you hear about what happened in the, on the road? <laughs> A little birdie told me. It smells good in here, Philomena. For a change, isn't that what you mean, Ellie? <laughs> no, it always smells good in here. What's on the stove? What's on the stove? Do you want to know what's on the stove, boy? Do you have a taste for bats, wings, spider legs, and crickets, warts? I, uh, I, I don't know. It's mushroom and vegetable stew. You eat vegetables, don't you? Don't be mean, Philomena. Oh, he knows I'm pulling his leg. It's mostly vegetables, anyway. And a few mushrooms that Roger found. Have a seat at the table, you two. Roger set the table for our guests. I'll never cease to be amazed watching Roger set the table. Piece by piece, he picks up Philomena's metal plates and silverware from the cupboard in his beak and flies each over to the table, putting them in their proper places. However, did Phil train him to do that? Philomena's finishing school for birds. Or does he just know? <laughs> the look on Brian's face is priceless. Thank you, Roger. Uh, thank you, Roger. And don't forget the napkins this time. Ellie, that is one amazing crow. He's a raven, and I wouldn't be so free-flowing with the compliments. They'll just go to his head. Napkins, Roger. Philomena, since you seem to know about our ordeal, would you be able to tell us who those people were? The people in the white van? Right. Come and villains, come and villains. Philomena? They should be savage for what they did. Savage. Rocks tied around their necks and thrown into the Box Butte Reservoir, that's what. I'm making a report to Sheriff Norris. Ah, Sheriff Norris, what's he gonna do? You boy, you've seen these villains, these van villains before, haven't you? Yes, I, uh... Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Philomena, Brian has... Sue was almost ready, but not quite. 
Roger, take that bowl of walnuts over to the table for these kids to snack on. That bowl looks way too heavy for Roger to... He dropped it. Oh my god. What the... Ellie, did you see that? Yes. The bowl. It fell to the floor, but all of the walnuts. They're all suspended in the air, just floating five or six inches from the ground. Now that's a new one for me. How is that? Oh, look at what you did, clumsy bird. I told you strange things happen here. Yeah, but... Please, I don't have to sweep them up. Roger, fetch me the butterfly net. Am I really seeing this? You're telling me that after what you say you've been through, you're surprised by this? Thank you, Roger. See, I can just scoop them up with this. Easy as pie. There we go. And back in the bowl. Here you go, kids. Snack on these. Stew's almost done. You crack them open with this hammer. Brian must be totally convinced that he's lost his mind. If what he's told me about what happened to him is true, or he believes it to be true, he must think the world has turned inside out. And look at him. You don't have to be Phil to see that he wants to get out of here. He's looking at his watch, but I don't want to leave if Phil can tell us something. If nothing else, Brian is one hell of a story. Ellie, my watch stopped. Yeah. It it wasn't expensive, but it is brand new. That happens here. Look, mine stopped too. We'll start again once we leave. You got an appointment or something? What's the rush? Stew's ready. Fill your bellies before you go. Sorry, all I got to drink is tea or water, unless I have some rum. Roger, we got any rum left? No rum. Tea sounds good, Philomena. Um, For me as well. Oh, tea for two and two for tea. (laughs) It's my own blend. Oh, what's in it? It's not polite to ask. Sorry. Good things, I'm sure. Pretty sure, all good things. The the stew is delicious. Seriously delicious. But I won't ask what's in it. Why? Don't you want to know what you're eating? (laughs) Stop giving Brian a hard time. (laughs) It's okay. I'm not easily offended, Phil. I I mean, Philomena. All right, let's get down to it. Go ahead and ask me what you came here to ask me. Well, it seems Brian had an accident, Philomena. A very unusual accident. Unusual, yes. Accident, no. Well, I don't think it's been... Anyway, it seems it's affected his memory. He... You no need to tell me anymore. Give me your hand, boy. Yes, you could do with some hand lotion to begin with. I want to. What I know is you want to forget. Isn't that right? I... The life you had before, it was painful to you. So you feel like it's better to forget. But my wife... Perhaps it is better to forget. Flight. Take flight. Are you seeing the accident? Oh, yes. The accident. The explosion. Enough. Enough. I I can't see anymore. Finish your stew. I have some herbs to package. Are you okay, Philippe? Herbs to get ready. I have to make a living, don't I? Even crazy old blind witches in the woods have to make a living. Thanks for lunch, Philomena. I don't suppose you'd care to share the recipe? No, I would not. Maybe I'll leave it to you in my will. You have a will? (laughs) Of course not. (laughs) Well, thank you, Philomena. That was really great. Roger, clear the table, please. And it's your turn to do the dishes. Yes, it is. I did them yesterday, remember? Bird blues marbles. Here, Ellie, could you drop these herbs off at the general store for me? Save me a trip. Of course. And you, boy, here's some lotion for your hands. Make them smooth as a baby's bottom. Thanks. Make it yourself? 
Yeah, <laughs> it's Jergens. <laughs> I just put it in another bottle. Well, truth be told, I added a little something extra, made it better. Be sure to put it up just before bedtime. Thank you. Bye, Philomena. Thanks again. Bye, Roger. You come anytime. And boy, maybe it's best to forget him and move on. I... But don't forget the hand lotion just before bedtime. Okay, I won't. Bye. Roger, don't use so much soap. I'm sorry she wasn't more helpful. I don't know if she was or not. You were right. My watch is working again. <laughs> Told you. And the weird thing is, you don't have to reset it. It's showing the right time. How is that possible? We were there for at least an hour. I don't know. It's like time stops there. You say that as if it's a normal thing. Somehow it is for this place. Well, is, is it her? I mean, not to belabor the witch theme too much, but does she have some kind of power over the place? I don't think it's her. I think... It's the area itself. What do you mean? I have a thing for the paranormal. Yeah, Sheriff Norris mentioned that this morning. Ever since I was a kid, I've always had a keen interest in the unusual, the unexplained. I don't blanketly believe in every weird thing that comes along, but I have done a lot of reading on this subject, and I just think it's fascinating. So maybe you do believe my story. This whole area, a good part of Sheridan County and adjacent counties, is considered... <sighs> A paranormal hotspot. What does that mean? Weird, unexplainable things happen here. They have for centuries. You can look it up. It's been written up in books and on dozens of paranormal websites, let alone the articles archived at the Courier. There are a lot of hotspots around the country. The Superstition Mountains in Arizona, Sedona, Skinwalker Ranch in Utah, the Bridgewater Triangle in Massachusetts, the Devil's Backbone in Texas. What? Are they like the... Bermuda Triangle? Not really. They seem to be focal points for all sorts of unexplained phenomena, like ghosts, UFOs, strange disappearances, missing time, cattle mutilation. Which we saw. Right. That might have been the first one for Luis, but it certainly wasn't the first one for this area. Luis isn't one to hold much stock in anything related to the paranormal. That's why he was so quick to jump to target earlier. Hmm. What else? Unexplained floating balls of light, psychic phenomena, weird creatures. Like the one in your office basement? Well, I don't know. I'm still skeptical about that one. Actually, I've been meaning to ask you about that. What? When we were down there, Hank and I were suggesting maybe it was a raccoon or a bat, and you kept insisting it wasn't, even though you didn't see it, like you knew it was something else. I did? You did? You don't remember? You were pretty emphatic. No. I have no memory of that. Ellie, could... Could this place, being a paranormal hotspot, could... Could that explain how I survived the fall from the plane? I don't know. I mean, if... If gravity was affected, like it was at Philomena's... I really don't know. Maybe. Well, that would explain it, wouldn't it? I guess it's possible. But... I said I don't know, Brian. Even if it did, it still wouldn't explain you. What do you mean? I mean you. You say you don't remember things. You seem totally uninterested or worried about your wife, your job, your life. I don't know what to make of that. You still don't believe me, do you? I don't know what to believe, Brian. It's too fantastic. Even for this place. I see. If what you say is true, maybe there's another explanation. Like what? I don't know. We need to figure it out. I'll try to help you. How? There must be a list of all the passengers on the plane, right? I'm sure those names have been published. I'm pretty sure I've seen it come across on the AP services. AP? Associated Press. It's a news service. I pick up some of their articles for the courier. Let's go back to my office and check it out. See if the name Brian Larson is listed. Then 
we'll at least have proof of that. Do you want coffee? There's a Keurig in the corner over there. Uh, maybe later. Where can I start looking for passenger names? Should I look in editions of the Courier? No, I didn't publish them in the Courier. No one around here would be interested in that level of detail about the crash. Only about how it might affect corn or beef prices. But I'm sure there's a passenger list published in the Journal Star a few days back. There's a stack of them there on the other desk. If it's not in there, I'm sure we can find it online. Wow. This is a really nice Nikon camera, Ellie. DSLR, full-frame sensor. Wow. Video capture. 12,000 ISO. I hope the paper paid for this. It did. But I barely know how to use it. You seem to know cameras pretty well, though. I guess I do. You're also stalling. Okay. I'll start with the paper. Actually, Brian, before you start that, I think you should call your wife. There's the phone. There's no excuse. She must be worried to death or even grieving. You have to call her and tell her you're all right. Yeah. You see, this is exactly what I mean, Brian. I don't understand you. Why are you so reluctant? She's your wife. Even if you are separated, call her for God's sakes. Okay. I'll call her. Well, do I have to dial it for you? This is... I... I can't remember the number. Brian. I swear, Ellie, I cannot remember our phone number. I'm not bullshitting you. I, I can't remember. Okay. Fine. We can look it up online. What's the town? Evanston? Yes, Evanston, Illinois. Teresa, right? Brian. Teresa? Um... Yeah. Yes, Teresa. I still think that MRI is a good idea. Well, nothing comes up for a Teresa Larson in Evanston. Did you have a home phone that was unlisted, or was her cell phone unlisted? I, um... Speaking of cell phones... Ellie Farnsworth, don't get to thinking you're even close to off the hook yet. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Did you call Sheriff Norris? He did. Okay, I'll be right out. Right. Thanks, Jimmy. Bye. Breaking news? Not exactly, but I have to run. You'll be okay here, right? I'll see what you can find in the paper and feel free to use my laptop. There's nothing confidential on there. Help yourself to the coffee. I should be back in a half hour or so. Okay. Thanks, Ellie. And give some serious thought to seeing a doctor. There's a clinic in Rushville. Look up the number, make an appointment, and I'll drive you to get checked out. And Brian, if you get really bored, see that small green filing cabinet in the corner? Yes? Those are my own personal X-Files. Reports and files about a lot of those anomalous activities I brought up before that happen around here. I'll be back soon. Okay, here's a stack of the Journal Star. July 11, July 10. I would think it would be in one of these. Here it is. Crossland Airlines crash. Who were the victims? They're in alphabetical order. Johnson, Judd, Kelly, Kelly, Kuhner. Here it is. Larson, BG, unrecovered. Right. They haven't found my body. Or anything they could identify as part of my body. Well, that's good to know. I, I'm not officially dead, I guess. What a strange feeling to read my name on that list. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Crossland Airlines? That's what the TV newscaster called it, too. I was on Grey Sky Airlines. Grey Sky. 
It was a gray sky plane that crashed, not... I am totally confused. There weren't two crashes, were there? I don't understand. Could I be totally mixed up about the airline? I can look this up better on Ellie's computer. I'll search the news section of Google. Gray Sky Airlines Accident. Ellie? Mr. Larson, right? May I ask what the hell you're doing? Well, I was, uh... Um, Where's Ellie? Oh, she, um... She had to go out. Got a phone call and went out. Does she know you're here? Yes, Sheriff, she does. She... She say you could use that computer? Yes. I, I just wanted to look something up. Stay right there, Mr. Larson. Just stay put for a moment. Ellie? Bill? I'm at your office. I, I found this Larson fella in here using your laptop. You know anything about that? You did. Okay, just making sure. How are things going out there? My deputy getting all the info? Okay, how about you? Everything all right? Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, see you later. Bye. Well, she said she did give you permission. Is everything okay? What are they Never doing? mind about that, Mr. Larson. You don't know me, do you? What? Look, I'm sure you're very good at your job, Sheriff. <laughs> Can I see some identification? I... I don't have any identification. I lost my wallet. Lost your wallet? No driver's license? No credit card? No, sir. No way to prove who you are or who you aren't? I guess not. Can I get your social security number? That would help. I... I can't remember it. Are you playing games with me, Mr. Larson? No, Sheriff. Look, I, I had an accident. Ellie can tell you I had an accident, and it's affected my memory. Really? I don't have any reports of a car accident or a car breakdown, which is what you told Eugene McKenna. Eugene? Target. You told him your car broke down somewhere around here. Nothing about an accident. And there ain't no car broke down around here, so it seems like you're playing a game with us, Mr. Larson. Now, what are you doing here? What is your business with Ellie? Nothing. I'm just trying to... Listen, Sheriff, I haven't broken any laws, have I? I don't know. There's a law against lying to an officer of the law. Well, I haven't done that. Maybe you have, and maybe you haven't. You don't say much of anything, do you, Mr. Larson? You're pretty damn careful. And I've learned to keep a sharp bead on a man as careful as you are. How long you plan on staying in this county, Mr. Larson? I don't know. I suggest you move on or go back to where you came from. I think that would be best for everyone. If not, I suggest you get yourself some ID. Come out to the sheriff's office in Rushville and we'll help you get a copy of your driver's license. You can be sure I'll be checking on it. And one personal piece of advice. If you hurt Ellie in any way, financially, physically, emotionally, any way whatsoever, you're going to lose a lot more than your ID. You catch my drift? <laughs> if you need a ride out to the sheriff's office, you let me know. I'd be happy to take you out in my back seat. Nice seeing you too, Sheriff. Great. Now I'm logged out of Ellie's computer. Maybe I should get out of this place. Paranormal hotspot or not, a lot of the weirdness around here seems to be coming down on my head. But now Ellie has me curious about what else is in her X-Files file cabinet. All nicely categorized. Cattle mutilations, crop circles, curses, ghosts, hauntings, missing time, 
weird creatures. There must be more in here about that creature in the basement. They said it was spotted in other places. Wow. There are a lot of reports about this thing going back, it looks like, at least 10 years. Apparently no one's been able to get a picture of this thing, so what's this? It's a picture of the house. The abandoned house near the field where I woke up. Looks like it is in much better shape in this picture. Must have been taken when people still live there. Ooh, I wonder. Good photo, though. Expertly composed. On the back, only two initials. D.S. I wonder what this has to do with the creature. Ellie might know. What else do we have here? She wasn't kidding when she said this place is a vortex for weird shit. Look at all this stuff she has collected. Here's a folder just labeled unknown. Photos, newspaper clippings going back decades. What? This photo. The men in this photo. It's me. Or, he looks just like me, except he has a beard. A bit younger, maybe, but... The only thing on the back is a sticker with the date written on it. April 2006. What the hell? I am completely freaking out. Who is this guy? Is it me? How could it be? Or why does he look exactly like me? And what is it doing in this paranormal file cabinet? Hi, Louise. Well, look who finally showed up to pay his bill. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want you and Hank coming after me with that shotgun. Wise decision. That'll be $85. American money. Interest rates are high in Nevada. <laughs> wow. I don't know if I can afford to eat here. Ah, uh, you can't afford not to. What can I get you, Mr. Larson? Please, Brian. Um, let's see. How about... Uh, BLT. Extra mayonnaise. And a nice tea. You got it. BLT. Extra mayo. Yep. So I hear you and Ellie paid a visit to old Phil this morning. We did. How did you hear? <laughs> what they say about small towns is true. Everybody knows everybody else's business. It's quite a place she has out there. I love that old lady. I go out there once a month for a reading. Last time she told me that a tall, handsome stranger was going to come into my life. So naturally, when you sauntered in yesterday, I figured, hallelujah, the day has arrived. <laughs> Is that right? Hey, Louise, I wanted to ask you about yesterday. Sorry, I didn't save your breakfast. Although Hank might be recycling the bacon for your BLT. When I came in, you asked me if I wanted the usual. As if you knew me. As if I been in here many times before. Yeah, about that. My mistake. I thought you looked like someone who used to come in here all the time. But that was a long time ago. Years. I'm pretty good with remembering faces. Or at least I used to be. Do you remember his name, this other guy? Uh, no. Like I said, it's been quite a few years. And I'm better with faces than names. Do you remember if he had a beard? As a matter of fact, he did have a little bit of a beard. Is he a relative of yours? A brother, maybe. Because there is a strong resemblance, it seems to me. No. I was just curious. Ha! You are a curious one, aren't you? Here's some sugar for your tea. It's unsweetened. Thanks. 
So what did Phil have to say? Oh, I wanted to see if she could help with a problem, personal problem. Yeah, well, she's the one to ask. So, in the short time you've been here, you and Ellie seem to be spending a lot of time together. BLT's up. Not really. Well, I guess we have, but not like that. I mean, there's nothing to it. She's trying to help me, too. Sheriff Norris seems eager to help. <laughs> yeah, in a completely different way. Don't let him rile you. He's just watching out for Ellie. Yeah, I got that. The way I hear it, they were an item when they both lived in Lincoln. Louise, mind your own business. It is my business. I don't get paid enough to just serve BLTs. Where is Ellie anyways? I saw her flying out of town about two hours ago. Yeah, I don't know. She went chasing after a story, I think. She said she'd only be gone half an hour or so, but she never came back. Huh. Extra mail. Man after my own heart. Well, you just take whatever Sheriff Norris says with a grain of salt. If you're planning to stay around here. Are you? Am I what? Planning to stay around here. Well, as a matter of fact, I was thinking of looking for a job. I'm running low on cash. I don't suppose there's anything in Allison. I could use a housekeeper, but you gotta work shirtless. That's sexual harassment, please. Oh, beans. Now who's not minding his own business? Sexual harassment. <laughs> I, I don't think that's quite the job. What kind of work are you? Check out the filling station. What? The filling station on the corner of Moorhead. Jay's looking for somebody to take the morning shift. I don't think it pays much, unless you're a mechanic, too. Well, I am pretty good with cars and gadgets. Thanks, Hank. You sure? You don't look like the grease monkey type. Hands are too clean. Man's gotta eat. By the way, this is a great BLT. I wonder what happened to Ellie. She never did come back and it's getting late. Might as well head back to the room. Jay said he might call tonight and let me know if I got the job. It's so strange. My job in Chicago paid ten times what I'd be making at the gas station. Yet I think I'll actually be happier pumping gas, changing oil, and doing tune-ups than doing whatever the hell I was doing in Chicago. God, what's wrong with me? I have to remember to ask Gunther how old this hotel is. Gunther? Gunther? He, she must be out. Hi. Hello. You must be Betty. I just changed your linens. Put in fresh towels. Oh, thank you. So, you're related to Gunther. Um, Gunther is your... I'm Gunther's niece. I help out. Right. Good night, Mr. Larson. Good night. Oh, Betty? Yes? Last night I heard noises. Quite a bit of noise, actually. From the room above mine? Gunther asked me to look. And? There's no one up there now. Oh. But there might have been someone up there last night? I don't know. Well, it's not important. Good night. It might have been Mr. Abernathy. Mr. Abernathy? He stays here sometimes. He stays in different rooms... Comes and goes. Different room every time he stays. Oh. Gunther's okay with it. It must have been him, then. It might have been Mr. Abernathy. Okay. Um, is he the one who knocks on the doors in the middle of the night? No, not him. Good night.
like uncle like niece? Or is it like aunt like niece? Whatever. I should have bought a book at the general store. There's never anything on TV worth watching. Oh, I should put on Philomena's super duper hand lotion. I don't want to offend anyone with my less than silky smooth man hands. Let's see. Ooh, this stuff doesn't smell like Jergens. What the hell did she put in it? Feels good, though. You know, hotel or not, this is the most comfortable mattress I've ever slept on. Who could have expected that in a place like this? I hope Ellie's okay. I'm sure she is. I'm quite sure she can take care of herself. I wonder what she'll think of me working at Jay's gas station and auto service. She'll probably just say I'm avoiding my life in Chicago, which I suppose I am. Philomena said it too, that my forgetting, that I'm trying to forget that other life. Am I? Because I hated it so much? Because I was unhappy? Maybe Sheriff Norris was right about one thing. I should get some kind of ID. I'll have to. If I'm going to be getting a paycheck, I'm going to have to pay taxes and all the rest of it. I'll need my social security number at least. Then maybe Norris will get off my back. Doubt it. And I should try to call... Uh, oh my god. What's her name? I can't remember my wife's name. Holy shit! How can I not know it? Of course I know it. It's... It's... I know it starts with a... A T... Or a, or a V, or, I'm losing my mind, losing my mind, losing. What? What? Who is it? What the hell? Who is it? Do you know what time? What the? No one. And no one in the hallway. I know I heard it. Could I have been dreaming? No, I, I know I heard it. <gasps> who, who are you? Wake up, Brian. I'm dreaming. I must be dreaming. A woman and a child. They're just standing there by the window. But I can see right through them. And we're not on the ground floor. The moonlight making them glow like... I'm, I'm dreaming. I, I must be. Who are you? She's trying to say something. But I can't hear her. What do you want? Why is your child crying? I can't understand you. What are you trying to say? Who are you?
Taking Flight is a production of CNY Pod Players, created by Stephen Wagner and Sarah Krill, written, directed, and edited by Stephen Wagner, and featuring the voice talents of Josh Beckinsale, Paul Bowler, Carrie Bostick, Kara Buttermore, Sarah Krill, Jim Drake, Lonnie Etter, Lonnie Etter Jr., Adam Kayser, Jessica Kayser, Bob Kaplan, William Lamphier, Melissa Liacono, Deborah Martin, Hannah Myers, Taylor Mills, Kathy Mosier, Danielle Priori, Jim Revenaugh, Raina Schneider, Paul Stern, and Stephen Wagner. Music by Janelle Crouch. Next time on Taking Flight. Oh my God. Look, down there. At the end of the road, the white van, and those two, they're watching us. What the hell are they up to? Well, two can play at this game. Hop in. But I have to... Get in! I didn't see any white van. They were right in front of us. And just vanished in the thin air. All I can honestly tell you, Ellie, is that I feel like I need to stay here. That the answers to whatever has happened to me are here. I don't know how, but I just know it. Oh, I forgot to tell you. When I was out at the McGowan place yesterday, these two characters showed up. Said they were ghost hunters or paranormal investigators or something. They weren't driving a white van, were they? No. A lime green VW Beetle with a big picture of an alien head on the door. I think I saw a ghost, Ellie, in my hotel room. Are you serious? Yes. Two ghosts, in fact. A woman and a child. The child was crying, and the woman was trying to say something, but I couldn't hear her. She was trying to tell me something. I'm sure I saw the creature go behind this type cabinet. Yeah, me too, but we looked. There was nothing back there. Give me the flashlight. Ah, Ellie, look. As I suspected, a hole in the wall. I had no idea that was there. Look, Ellie, it's a tunnel. That's incredible. That's next time on Taking Flight. Hi, this is Sarah Krill. Please help us spread the word about taking flight. Be sure to rate us and review on iTunes, which makes it easier for others to find and enjoy our podcast.